are primates. So uh, I feel, always feel humans think that their behavior is sort of their own invention, like we came up with everything. And, and uh, my main task is to show that many of the, the tendencies and the capacities that we have are actually much older than our species and are basically primate tendencies. So for example, uh, politics uh, is driven by a hunger for power, which we can very clearly see, for example, in male chimpanzees. And they have similar tactics as politicians. They, they form coalitions. They do favors for the ones who support them. They, they have divide and rule strategies. They try to break up uh, relationships with others that they don't like and that are harmful to themselves. And so I feel all, all of these things, and I, and I could mention a ton more, mm -hmm. uh, we share with them, which means that the capacities that we use uh, are not our own inventions, are not just a product of socialization, but are uh, built into our species, so to speak. Well, that's the interesting part, is when I was a student, I was asked to study aggression in chimpanzees and monkeys. And um, that was all people were interested in, was aggression and violence. And I discovered that chimpanzees, after a fight, they kiss and embrace each other. So I got actually interested in the opposite, so in how they resolve conflicts between each other. And uh, I've done many studies on reconciliation behavior, which is found now in many animals, not just in the primates, has been found in dolphins and elephants and all sorts of animals. Not more humane, but um, these tendencies of, of empathy and altruism, you can find in them. We do tests, for example, where one chimpanzee can produce food for himself, but he can also produce food for himself and his partner who's sitting next to him and they prefer actually the second option. They prefer to eat together with the other one. Mm -hmm. And so these altruistic tendencies you can actually demonstrate in the monkeys and in the apes. Yeah. I think that's the big trend is that um, in the 70s and 80s, we talked only about um, free enterprise and selfish motives, the selfish gene, all of this was very popular. And I think at the moment we, especially after the crash in 2008, we have discovered that this open market system is not maybe the best possible system and people are getting more interested in what, what keeps a society together, what is sort of positive tendencies in the society. And so all this emphasis on greed and selfishness is sort of passé now. Well, I'm, I'm best known for the studies of reconciliation, which uh, I've done several, uh, several sort of new projects in my life. And, and they have always gone through the same sort of cycle, is that people at first say, well, that cannot be true, that's very anthropomorphic, that, that doesn't apply to animals. And reconciliation was one of those things that people couldn't believe that animals were doing. And then later we start to downgrade the cognition behind it. We say it's maybe not as complex as you think. And then uh, we discover it in dogs and in crows and in monkeys. And, and then at the end of the cycle, people say, well, it's very obvious. It, uh, wh what's the big deal about it? And they don't see any more. So reconciliation doesn't sound as complex. Uh, as, because if, if you take, for example, for reconciliation behavior, if you say it requires forgiveness, which is, a let's say, a Christian concept. That's how pe some people think. Mm -hmm. Then, of course, it is unlikely that monkeys reconcile, for example. But uh, if you just say it is... They have relationships and they are disturbed by aggression and they need to repair them. You have a sort of more functional account of it. Uh, it becomes more likely that they have it. Yeah. That's the same true for chimpanzees. Okay. So, so um, chimpanzee females, I always call them, compared to the males, peacekeepers and not peacemakers. So the chimpanzee males are peacemakers in the sense that they can have a fight and immediately reconcile and they, they, they cycle through these things very easily uh, without any problem. Whereas a fight between females is not easily reconciled. There, there are long grudges that are being kept. And so what females do is stay away from the ones that they have fights with. So, so they, they avoid their rivals, which means that they don't have the fights and they very rarely have a fight with their best friends. Oh, we're doing a lot of work on emotions, and I think uh, animal emotions is going to be a big topic in the future. And, and it has been underestimated to a large degree because Skinner and his friends, they put a taboo on emotions, and animal emotions were either non-existent or irrelevant. 
and uh, no one thinks like that anymore. You don't meet, I don't think I meet scientists nowadays anymore who deny emotions in animals. But, but there are still many scientists who think you cannot measure them and we shouldn't measure them and that it's a sloppy topic or something. But I think it's going to be a big topic just as it is in humans nowadays. My scientific hero, apart from Darwin, let's say, um, well, it would be the, the generation before me of primatologists, people like Hans Kummer, Swiss primatologist, Jane Goodall, uh, Emil Mansell. Um, so, so people of that generation, they, they built up primatology. Imanishi in Japan, and I've written extensively about him, who, who's very underestimated because he's never mentioned, but uh, Japanese primatology influenced all of the other primatology, basically. Mm -hmm. So I think that's uh, the people I would be looking at, yeah.